morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, head to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website. Or Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Beyond OsteoFX, Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium. Lots of uh, all, our, all the Longevity products, or most of the Longevity products, are available through either the websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team if you can't find a product at the website or you just want to speak to somebody. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're business-minded, if you want to start a business, if you want to start a health, health business, I'm not sure what that noise is. If you want to start a health business or uh, if, you're, if you like the idea of being in the nutrition business, if you want to help people out at the most fundamental level, which is the level of their good health and wellness, call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. Make as much money as you like. Make as little money as you like. Set your own hours. Work out of the home. Enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Or even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, call 866-735-2470 to sign up. Or you can sign up off our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with accelerated aging, you want to prevent aging, wrinkles, fine lines, acne blemishes. If you've got dark spots or hyperpigmentation, retinol is your go-to active ingredient. Nothing tops retinol for multifunctionality. Most retinol products that you get over the counter are on the order of 0.1%, 0.2%, 0.5%. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel is made with 10 10 times as 10 times as much gosh I'm not sure what that noise is is made with 10 times as much uh, retinols you'll find in most over the counter products you'll find out you can find out all about our truth 5% retinol gel and truth serum and truth balm and truth omega 6 healing cream at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay got lines open for you at 8442366010 we'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour on our last program, we were talking about the relationships, the relationship of components that are found in fruits and veggies called FODMAPs, fermentable sugars, fermentable oligo, di, mono, saccharides, and polyols. Polyols, by the way, feature substances like xylitol and sorbitol, which many of you know if you're a diabetic is a, as anti or as a, a diabetic friendly sweeteners. They can wreak havoc on your digestive system. They're no, notorious for causing bloating and gas and sometimes diarrhea and loose stools. That's because they cla they're classified as these FODMAPs, fermentable sugars. The F in FODMAP stands for fermentable, and that's where you run into the problem. Fermentation is the action that bacteria have on various substances. 
substances, particularly sugars, and these fermentable sugars can cause all kinds of digestive distress. The reason I think this is important is because many of us are laboring under the illusion that fruits and veggies are benign and gentle, and you can eat as much fruits and veggies as you want, and as long as you're low, uh, you, as long as you're gluten-free, you're out of the out of the woods when it comes to digestive health problems and and um, and, and the relationship of digestive health issues to arthritis and autoimmune autoimmune issues and brain health issues, etc. It's not true. You can be gluten-free and still be in a world of trouble via this FODMAPS connection, and it's really important to recognize that means any fruit and vegetable, particularly artichoke onions, garlic, leeks. These are very, very high in the, in the FODMAPs, the fermentable sugars. So you can't just go gluten-free. Gluten-free is, is a great start for sure, and many, if not most of us, are going to have a problem with gluten. But to, to think that you're somehow out of, the, out of the woods by just going gluten-free is incorrect, and the FODMAPs issue blows this gluten-free theory out of the water. I'm not saying gluten-free is not helpful, and I'm not saying gluten's not problematic. It is for most people. Nonetheless, there are lots of things in foods that can cause problems, especially if you have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. A FODMAPs problem is a, a classic recipe for SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's because bacteria love these FODMAP sugars, and so they can overgrow, thus your SIBO, S-I-B-O. There is no such thing as a health challenge, a long-term chronic health challenge that doesn't have some kind of intestinal or digestive or food component. And this is especially important when it comes to understanding the significance, the relevance, and the supreme importance we have to pay to the kinds of fruits and vegetables we eat. And that's why, in my opinion, a food diary is so darn important. A food diary where you write down everything you eat and you write down how your body responds after you eat that food, especially if you're dealing with a long-term chronic health challenge and extra especially if you're frustrated from dealing with your long-term chronic health challenge. If, you're, if you've been trying to deal with your rheumatoid arthritis or your eczema, your connective tissue disease, your autoimmune disease for years or even decades and nothing seems to be helping and you're stuck on steroid drugs and you're going to the doctor all the time, you're going to multiple doctors all the time and you can't get to the bottom of your issue, guaranteed, 100%, you're gonna find relief by focusing on digestive health and by working with foods, especially when it comes to this whole issue of FODMAPs. F-O-D-M-A-P-S, FODMAPs. Reading from the journal Gastroenterology, low FODMAP diet cuts irritable bowel syndrome. Researchers from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden found that, quote, a diet with reduced content of fermentable short-chain sugars reduces symptoms of IBS. No surprise if you've been listening to this program. No surprise if you understand the importance of FODMAPs. Lower your FODMAPs, feel better, particularly if you're dealing with some kind of long-term chronic health challenge. From Monash University, IBS management through diet. Research team at Monash University has shown that in short-term studies, a diet low in FODMAPs may be used to control gastrointestinal symptoms associated with this condition. You don't need studies to show this anyway. I like, I like quoting the research and quoting the studies for those of you who are skeptical or cynical, but common sense, common biochemical sense, common biological sense tells you if you, give your, if you put lots of uh, foods in your body that bacteria can ferment and you're having some kind of digestive health issue, very likely it's related to those foods. The key to understanding the health impact of FODMAPs is the F. That's the fermentable. What happens in some digestive tracts is bacteria will act on sugars. That's fermentation. And this can lead to the proliferation of these bacteria as well as their outgassings, their emanations, their secretions. Following these increases in the numbers, the raw numbers of the bacteria and their emitted gases, you're going to, susceptible people anyway, will experience bloating and pain and gas and impaired digestion, diarrhea, constipation, mental health issues are likely, ADD in children, depressive disorders, psychosis, and even schizophrenia can be related to these outgassings. If you're wondering if you have a FODMAPS problem, eat a bunch of dried apricots and watch what happens. If you find yourself gassy and bloaty, especially after raisins and figs and dates and, and these dry fruits, which are mega high in FODMAPs, you probably got a problem. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this.
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you've got intestinal or bowel issues and you're curious about FODMAPs or gluten intolerance or anything we're speaking about here today, the ultimate nightly essence from longevity, which I consider to be the go-to probiotic supplement if you're dealing with... Uh, digestive health challenges, or if you just want a good probiotic supplement, I love the Ultimate Nightly Essence because it's made with enzymes, especially a digestive enzyme or an enzyme called natokinase, which is tremendously valuable for the circulatory system for thinning the blood. It's got other digestive enzymes in it. It's got a full spectrum, a wide spectrum of bacteria, and it's got a whole bunch of them, too. That's the two things you're looking for in your probiotic is the number of bacteria, which is measured in billions of units, as well as the uh, amount of strains of bacteria, the number of different types of bacteria. Ultimate Nightly Essence has got a wide, uh, 15 different, I think 12 or 15 different types of bacteria in it, plus digestive enzymes. You can find out about the Ultimate Nightly Essence and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call 866 735 2470. If you want to speak to a real live person, 866 735 2470. Okay, so FODMAPs, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and uh, polyols, xylitol, sorbitol, fructose, glucose, mannose, galactose. There's all kinds of sugars and vegetables and fruits that can be problematic because they feed bacteria. They act as a source of nutrition for bacteria. If you're thinking to yourself, well, isn't that a good thing? Do I want to feed bacteria? Well, yes and no. If you don't have any digestive health issues, go crazy. But if you do, be very, very careful and pay attention to what kind of foods are causing what problems. If you start a fiber program, for example, if you're doing flax and chia seeds, I do flax and chia seeds every day. If you do your flax and chia seeds and you notice that you're bloating and gassy and don't feel good, back off. Sometimes you have to start a fiber program very slowly. Sometimes when you're adding fiber into your diet, you've got to start off with maybe a tenth of the regular dose. I do maybe 40 grams of fiber every day, 30 to 40 grams of fiber every day. You may only want two or three grams of fiber every day and then build yourself up. Always use apple cider vinegar and probiotics when you're doing your fiber so you get the whole, the whole shebang, everything you need for digestive health, or at least a lot of what you need for digestive health. This is why fermentable vegetables are so important because they get, you get the fiber and you get the probiotics. Fermented veggies may be the single most important and powerful nutritional, certainly digestive food you could ever eat. And also, this idea of FODMAPs is why, we said it's why gluten intolerance and gluten free is just a tiny little piece of the puzzle. And it's also why good food, bad food lists are just a starting point. If you're trying your good, if you're following the good food, bad food list and you're going gluten free and you're still symptomatic, don't be disappointed and frustrated. It's likely that you'll find symptomatic relief as you get more and more detailed and more specific about what you eat. An easy way to determine if there's a digestive component to our health is to fast for two or three days and let your symptoms subside. When your symptoms subside after fasting, for most people, long-term chronic degenerative issues, long-term chronic degenerative related symptomology, especially pain, will subside when you stop putting food into your system. And then when you start eating again, you do a controlled experiment. You be like you, you treat your body as if it was a, as if you were an engineer. You reverse engineer your symptomology. You troubleshoot. The way you troubleshoot is you stop everything. I call that hitting the reset button, and then you introduce things one by one back into the system and see what happens. If you're dealing with leaky gut issues, by the way which is what follows gluten intolerance and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and FODMAPs problems, you're going to be more susceptible to excitotoxins. That's because once these, these lectins and components of food, gluten, et cetera, enter into, the, enter into the gut, enter into the blood through the gut, they can damage the blood-brain barrier. That means we're going to be more susceptible to glutamates, we're going to be more susceptible to NutraSweet poisoning or NutraSweet toxicity. MSG toxicity. And if you're subsisting on the standard American diet and nobody told you about lectins and FODMAPs and intestinal damage and excitotoxic uh, mental issues that can be associated with this and you've you never associated them with what you're eating, this is great news because it restores your power back where it belongs to you. 
if you're frustrated and you don't know what to do and you're going from doctor to doctor and you're on prescription drugs and the doctors are mystified and they say, well, it must be all in your head or there's nothing you can do about it. These ideas about the relationship of FODMAPs and, and lectins and gluten and intestinal damage and excitotoxins, this is the best news you will have heard, you'll ever hear because it shows you how much power you have over your health, challenge, health challenges. It represents a potentially powerful way to address recovery and symptom elimination without drugs, without doctors. Here's what you do. You be careful about gluten and lectins, obviously. Stay away from them, obviously. And likewise with avoiding glutamate and aspartate and excitotoxicity. And then there are incredibly valuable and incredibly important excitotoxin and uh, detoxification, general detoxification supplements you could use. One of the most important and interesting is a molecule that I first discovered in pharmacy school back in the 1980s. Because they use this molecule in emergency rooms for, asp for uh, Tylenol poisoning and aspirin poisoning and liver toxicity. And I talk about it all the time. It's become my favorite non-essential nutritional supplement. And if you've listened to this program before, you know what I'm talking about. And you know that I love the idea of multifunctionality. I love nutrients that have lots of different benefits. Glucosamine, digestive uh, enzymes, all vitamins and minerals, formulas like the Ultimate Nightly Essence and the Ultimate Fupoid Z that you get from Longevity. These all provide users with multifunctional benefits and multifunctionality makes them incredibly valuable. With drugs, you get multi-side effects. With these kinds of supplements, nutritional supplements and formulations that you get from Longevity, you get multiple benefits. Multi, when it comes to multifunctionality, there is no supplement that can match the numerous protective benefits that you get from this supplement, which I consider to be my favorite, which is called NAC, NAC, N-acetylcysteine. I know you've heard about it if you've been listening to this program because I love this stuff. My favorite thing, one of my favorite things about NAC is it's great for hangovers. You know how you sometimes get, you go to gas stations or you go to sometimes vitamin stores or health food stores and you find these little packets or hangover, anti-hangover, or hangover protection or, or uh, uh, hangover relief kinds of supplements? NAC is the best. NAC. Take it pre-drinking, pre take it post-drinking, you'll get reduced hangovers. And if you take it uh, just regularly, you probably won't get hangovers, or at least you'll get very minimum hangovers because NAC supports the liver's ability to process alcohol, to detoxify alcohol, among other things, among many other things. NAC is a precursor to what has been called the body's master detoxifier. It's a raw material for helping the body build the master detoxifier glutathione. And like NAC, you probably heard of glutathione from me, or at least from somebody, because it's been in the news. If you haven't heard of glutathione, let me give you a couple of the highlights here, because it's amazing stuff. And remember, your NAC that you buy in the health food store, your NAC that you get, or your cysteine that you get in, uh, in your whey protein, cysteine's found in all high-protein foods, N-acetylcysteine is a special form of cysteine that's, that's uh, readily, that the body can utilize very readily. So it's sold as a supplement. But you can get cysteine in, in high-protein foods also. Cysteine and N-acetylcysteine are the build, is one of the three building blocks for making the glutathione molecule. But NAC, by the way, has its own, aside from the fact that it helps you make glutathione, it has its own wonderful uh, uh, health benefits, especially for the brain. And we're learning more and more about this every day. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break on Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking FODMAPs and glutathione and glutamine and uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial over overgrowth. I know I talk about the digestive system every single day. It's impossible to talk about health without talking about the digestive system. Not that I'm Mr. Food Guy in any way, shape, or form. I'm just telling you guys, if you have a health challenge, that's where you must start. Hit the reset button, do a food diary. I know I repeat myself, but you can't talk about health without talking about the primacy of the digestive system. This should make perfect sense because the outside world meets the inside world at the level of the intestine. Do you know that the food that we eat isn't even considered to be part of our bodies until it cross, crosses over from the intestinal wall into the, into the blood. You have little cells on the, that line the intestinal wall that will take little particles of food, microscopic particles. They're not really food. They're microscopic components of food. And they will suck up the food 
the little component, and then they'll flip over flip over to the other side of the garden hose. You can think of your intestine as a garden hose. And the little cells will flip over from the inside of the garden hose, boom, to the outside wall where that particle will get transferred into the blood. This is a very tightly regulated process, and rightly so. And this is why your immune system is located largely in the digestive system because the outside world meets the inside world at that point. So it's not like you have to be Mr. Food Guy to appreciate the relevance of digestive health to the uh, health of the system, the health of the body, because this is where the outside world becomes incorporated into our bodies at the level of the intestine. And you can imagine if you have a breakdown at this level or if you have a hole or leakiness at this level, you're going to have a problem. In fact, it's the only way you can have a problem with the exception of, <clears throat> excuse me, perhaps smoking cigarettes and, uh, and uh, um, maybe injecting things through your skin into the blood. Other than that, that juncture, that, that point where the, outside, the inside world or the outside world meets the inside world right at the level of the intestine is the key to understanding health and wellness. All right. Uh, I got a got an interesting guest coming on here. We're going to take a call because Jim's been holding for a while. Then we're going to get to an interesting guest who has a, a really cool story. I thought I uh, thought he it would be uh, it would be interesting for you guys, and also I thought it'd be relevant to what we're talking about here today. But first, let's take uh, Jim Jim in Colorado. Jim, you'll be our only call for the day here, I believe. How's it going there? I think I, I know who you are, Jim. Are you the uh, Skin Man? Jim. Do you have Jim? 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 Hey, Jim, you there? I think I have Jim. Okay. I think we always have a problem with Jim. I am sorry, Jim. I don't know what's with your phone, my friend, but it seems like we run into this problem. Are you there? Hello? Hey, Jim, are you there? Hello? Hey, Jim. Hey. Hey. What's going on, man? I'm out here in the yard getting rid of my skin. I remember you, Jim. I thought that was you. How is that? scabs all over my body. I mean, they're like... Uh, Jim, did you, you hear me? The scab is... Yeah. The scab is your body healing. A scab is the healing process, but the problem isn't the scab. It's what you had before the scab that the scab yeah. is healing you from. This is a breakdown in the skin. Remember, the skin's got multiple layers, right? And I, I remember you're an engineer, correct? Yeah, used to be. Okay. Okay, used to be. But you understand the engineering philosophy of troubleshooting and backtracking. We talked about it earlier today. Your skin, right. is made up, your skin is made up of multiple layers. This is the biggest problem we have when it comes to addressing skin issues is it doesn't – our looks are deceiving. You look at your skin, you can't see that there's layers, but there are. Your problem is in the upper layer. But here's the thing, Jim. You, you, uh, for the listeners, I've been working with Jim now for probably a year or so. Jim has got a very severe case of, of dermatitis or eczema. Correct, Jim? PRP. P, he call, you, they're calling it PRP. Uh, Pity uh, rice, rice is Ruba Polaris. Right, but it's a basically that's the label it's a, they put on it. That's the label, but basically it's a, a, a severe breakdown of the surface of the skin, right? right. The tissue is broken right. down severely. Now, it doesn't matter what the name is. The skin is broken down. But here's the thing, Jim. This is where it becomes important to understand the structure of the skin if you're going to deal with it. The skin is multi-layered. Your problem is in the surface, right? It's called the epidermis, the surface layer, right? Well, it makes I'm getting, sense? Uh, I'm getting uh, wrinkles. Uh, well, hang know, on. Okay. Hang on. Let work with me here. Okay. Jim, you're an engineer. Right. We work with this step by step, okay? That's, that, okay. I, I'm not pulling your leg or, or teasing you here, you know, yanking your chain when I say engineering, because this is an engineering phenomena. This, it's a bioengineering phenomena. So you got to know what you're, you're dealing with in terms of its structure, right? Structure, fu structure right. precedes function. You got to know what the structure is before we can talk about the function. So the structure of the right. skin is it's got multiple layers, right? Your problem is on the surface layer. And here is the clue. Here's the major clue. In the surface layer, which is called the epidermis, there are no blood. There is no blood. All right? The only way toxicity gets into the body is through the blood. You have no blood in the epidermis, in the surface, but you had a problem in the epidermis, which tells us that the problem is not arising in the epidermis. It's arising lower in what is called the dermis. Follow me? You've yes. got a dermis problem, not a surface problem. You've got a deep skin problem. If you don't know the skin is layered, this isn't going to make any sense. But if you understand that the skin is a layer cake, now we can start to work, to, to, we can begin to address the problem. What is it about the dermis that's special? The dermis is connective tissue. Okay? You following, you're, you're working with me, you follow me here? 
You got yes. your. It looks like the problem is in the epidermis, the, but it can't be because there's no blood in the epidermis. So we go one layer down. That's where the blood is. That's in the connective tissue. So your real problem is a connective tissue problem. Now, why would the connective tissue break down? I'm going to give you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you one sentence that will explain pretty much all chronic degenerative diseases right now. Okay, ready? The, ready. Con the connective tissue. Thank you for playing along here, Jim. The connective tissue is the great dumping ground of toxicity from the blood. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. The connective yeah. tissue is the dumping ground of toxicity from the blood. We've kind of alluded to this over the past couple of days talking about CICs and, and circulating immune complexes. But just to put it succinctly, the connective tissue is the great dumping ground of toxicity from the blood. What you're experiencing, Jim, is a connective tissue problem. Connective tissue problems are preceded by toxins that get dumped into it. This initiates all kinds of biochemical havoc in the connective tissue, including immune reactions, which leads to more havoc because that's, immune reactions are inflammatory and that causes the death of cells and you get into this vicious cycle of the death of cells causing inflammation, inflammation causing the death of cells, inflammation blocking nutrient delivery, nutrient delivery causing the death of cells, causing more toxicity. It doesn't matter all of these things once you understand the concept. Are, are you with me so far? So it's a Jim? toxicity issue. It's a toxicity issue, probably compounded by nutritional deficiency because once the gut becomes broken down, then not only do toxins enter into the blood, but you don't absorb nutrients. So you deal with this, these downward spirals. So what do you do? You got to stop the cycle. You got to cut the, cut the head off the snake. And you do that first by fasting and then assessing what's going on with your foods and simultaneously supporting the health of the gut. You should be putting nothing in your, in your mouth until it's been completely assessed for toxicity. By that, I mean symptomology. And I, I know I've told you this before, but if you still have a problem, you're missing something. Because there's no way that you can have this kind of connective tissue distress and skin deterioration without this mechanism underneath. There's no way. It's impossible. Unless you just say, I'm cursed. Or which, uh, oh, some evil witch put a hex on me. You know, that's, that's what you're stuck with is magic. If you don't follow the science. Now, Jim, I, I want to work with you. And I'm going to consider you to be a case study for me. I, gotta, I, gotta, I want to get a call or, um, a special guest in our next segment. So email me and I'll work with you personally. But did, did everything I, did. I say I make sense? You at the beginning of the week. You did. I didn't catch that. Did everything I say make sense from an engineering standpoint? Yes, Okay, well, God bless you, Jim. I'm going to let you go, and I'll give you a shout here uh, later this, uh, probably this weekend or next week. Thanks, buddy. Take care. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be talking to a special guest here on our next week. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. I am very excited to have our guest on, Ralph Stanton. Ralph was suffering from kidney and liver failure, and I got his name from a guy who I've been talking to now for... Um, I don't know, maybe six months or so, who uh, is, uh, represents a company called Divinia Water, D-I-V-I-N-A, D-I-V-I-N-I-A-W-A-T-E-R, DiviniaWater.com, and they have a very interesting product that they're selling, and I don't like talking about products a lot, but this one I've used, and it is really tasty stuff. Uh, it's called Divinia Water. You can get it off DiviniaWater.com. Um, but it's not just tasty water, really, really delicious water. And I only drink, or for the most part anyway, I drink distilled water. I only like my, I like my water clean. But this Divinia Water is not only distilled, it's electrically activated. This is something we've, and, and I know we've talked about this on this program before. Uh, water is not water is not water. There are different kinds of water. The water in the body is not the same as the water that's out of your tap. Do you ever wonder? how 70% of your body can be water, but you don't just slosh around into a puddle. You always hear this 60%, 70%. It's actually more when you, from the molecular level. From the molecular standpoint, we're 99% water. But you wonder, how does this water somehow keep us... How, how can, if we're water, 99% water, how come we're not just like sloshing around? How do we remain reasonably solid to all appearances? It's because the water in our body is a special type of water. It's a magical water. It's a structured water. It's an activated water. And that's exactly what this Divinia water is. And there's a lot of really, really powerful research that talks about its importance. But even more fundamentally, there's lots of wonderful clinical, and that is talking to people, anecdotal stories that you hear about structured water in general. Uh, and I heard a really cool story about, uh, about 
this divinity water I want to share with you, and that's what Ralph is going to do. Ralph Stanton, welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Oh, thank you, Ben. Glad hey, to be good, here. Good to talk to you. So, uh, Divini, first of all, tell us a little bit about, and, and by a little bit, I mean succinctly, because we don't have a lot of time. What were your, what were your health challenges exactly? Well, my uh, health uh, challenges uh, resulted from an airborne uh, radioactive um, contamination that I was involved in as a uh, nuclear facility operator at the Idaho National Laboratory. Um, after after the uh, inhalation, you know, I experienced uh, vomiting. I experienced radiation poisoning. Got it. And uh, basically, over a few years, that just led to my health declining. Um, you know, I experienced um, uh, things like uh, severe depression, fatigue, uh, abdominal bloating, uh, bloody noses. Uh, you could tell something was wrong. You could you could tell something was clear. You could tell something was clearly wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. There was no doubt, and and I knew what it was from. Uh, unfortunately, there are no uh, known things that can help you out there after uh, radiological exposure. Exposure then initially uh, using the chelating agent, but after that first day, there's really uh, nothing else that can help you. And so as my uh, health was declining, my uh, wife had insisted that um, I do something about it. She had heard about Steve's uh, water through um, a lady who worked at a health food organization that we uh, usually would buy herbs from. And uh, she had indicated that she was buying this water that was drastically helping her mother's life and that she really had no other uh, thing she could turn to other than this water to help her. So, uh, you know, I was pretty skeptical. I was one of those people that thought water was water was water. Uh, but my wife is uh, quite a dominating lady and uh, quite a nag at sometimes. In a good way, right? In a, in a good yeah. way. Yes, in a, in a great way. And uh, so anyway, she um, insisted that, that I go and meet Steve. And so I did. I met him, uh, you know, in the summer of 2016. And then, uh, and then I had went to the doctor, and uh, they gave me some bad news about my, my kidneys and liver uh, being in uh, failure. And the doctor basically told me that they were going to keep me as healthy as they could for as long as they could. And uh, that was a real tough thing to take because they really didn't offer me uh, anything that could help me uh, other than, you know, just your normal uh, eating right and, and those types of things. So one thing I do know is if you're going to uh, – do anything about your health, you've got to learn about it and, and really take it into your own hands. And so I decided to go ahead and give uh, Steve's water a try. Uh, I w really wasn't expecting anything, but we got about a couple months down the line and I was drinking anywhere from a half a gallon to a gallon a day. And uh, they did some more blood results and the doctors were uh, very amazed at at how well, how much I had uh, improved. And so they were very encouraged about it. And um, anyway, I just got my blood results back here about two weeks ago, and uh, they are perfectly functioning. Wow. And... Uh, how do you feel? So anyway, they're, they're pretty amazed. I am too. I'm a believer. How, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. Uh, That's my awesome. energy's returned. Uh, depression is gone. And how how and, much of the, um, how much of the water are you drinking? I'm drinking probably three quarters to a gallon a day. And uh, how do you? Or what is your affiliation with the company? Are you just somebody who drinks the water, or what's how does that work? Affiliation with the company. Yeah, are you uh, Philly? Ralph? 
Yes. Are, how are you with the company? As far as as far as what do I do for them? Yeah. Do you or, work for the company, or what's your? How no, are you connect- I don't work for the company at all. So you're but, um, after the after the results uh, came back. I asked Steve if I could uh, invest with the company, and uh, now I pretty much uh, do a lot of uh, talking to other people that were uh, radiologically exposed who really have no answers hmm. and are sick and there's there's quite a few of them across the country and so um i am glad that i can uh, express to them that there is hope and uh i've got the uh you know the medical results to uh prove that how about and, uh, how about a- how about things aside from radiation toxicity? Have you seen any results with autoimmune diseases or digestive health problems or blood sugar problems, anything like that? Yes, I had uh, some digestive problems. I was I was just very bloated uh, all the For- time. And that's the first thing that really that I noticed after a week of drinking this water is that all the bloating went away. Ralph, in terms and of I other... Ralph, I'm thinking about other patients, other stories that you've heard. Have you heard other stories about things like from digestive health issues, autoimmune issues, all of that kind of stuff from other people? Oh, from other people that have, yes. that have had the radiation exposure? No, yes, that have drank have. the... Ralph, listen to me, oh. buddy. From other people who have drank the water, have you heard other stories? No, I haven't. Okay, so you're just telling your testimonial, your story on this stuff. Yeah, basically right now. And, okay, and good. that I am moving forward. Okay, cool. So we got about 30 seconds here. What's the website? Give us, give us uh, if people are interested in learning more or want to uh, purchase the water. I have DaviniaWater.com. Is that correct? Yes, DaviniaWater.com. DaviniaWater.com. And for the listeners, Davinia Water is structured water. It's organized water. I talked to the gentleman who actually makes the stuff, and I was very, very impressed. And then they sent me some, and I drank it, and I, I'm getting nothing out of this. I just want you guys to know. It is tasty. It's delicious. And then when I heard Ralph's story, I thought it would be important to share. Thank you so much, Ralph. I appreciate it, buddy. Have a great day, all okay. right? We'll talk, we'll talk soon, you, I'm sure. You too. Take care, man. So that's DaviniaWater.com. And I usually don't share this kind of stuff, but I thought it might be relevant for anybody out there dealing with some kind of health challenge. Uh, Structured water also, by the way, has an important detoxification property or detoxification effect on the body. It magnetically attracts toxins so that uh, Ralph's story makes perfect biochemical and biological sense, this idea of using it for radiation poisoning. Now, we've been talking about glutathione, uh, and glutathione, by the way, is one of the most important biochemicals in the body for dealing with radiation poisoning and learning how to build glutathione and using supplements like N-acetylcysteine that do that can go a long way towards helping if you're dealing with radiation toxicity or any kind of toxicity. And as we'll talk about next week, for brain health, for mental health, this is a very interesting role that uh, NAC in particular in particular plays when it comes to uh, overall overall health, the overall health of the body. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side, friends. That's all the time we have for today. I'm pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. 